because double comic con is so massive there's thousands and thousands and thousands now she had a buggy as well for when the child gets tired but children like i know my niece doesn't like being in her car seat at all she will be bawling her eyes out wearing the car it's actually I love my niece because I find it very annoying being in the car with my niece if she's not sleeping because she would just she hates being in her car seat like my sister I had to go shopping with my sister once because her husband couldn't make it with her couldn't do it with her I think he was working mm -hmm. and she, I was off that week and she wanted to go earlier so I went with her and I'm glad I did because I pushed the trolley because she had to hold her daughter because her daughter doesn't like being in like seats that much I had to hold her uh, my start to hold her at night to push the trolley and stuff so um because the baby was just crying she, it, she it. does uh, every now maybe it's just because of all the stories you tell me but she does sound like a temperamental little oh she's a little drama queen <laughs> she reminds me of me i was a little drama queen too um, when you were her age oh I, as a baby i was very much a drama queen um of course my entire family i was very much drama and fueled and i gained the vibe that so was my niece <laughs> she, she's 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 looking i remember when she was born she looked a lot like my brother-in-law but we all kind of agree now that she's a bit older. She looks a lot like my sister. Ah. And my other oldest, she actually looks a combination of my sister, her words, our mom, and her oldest sister. But then we're getting personality, she's she's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> a little Caitlin in the making. Oh, stop. But she might not be as nerdy as me. See, when I was younger, I was very much more not nerdy when I was a child. I was very, I always liked Disney and stuff and cartoons, I would say that. But I was very much more into fashion as like a child than I was as an adult. Yeah, that's fair. I think a lot of girls. I like think that. I got more into fashion as I got older. Again, I would say that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, just to answer the original question, uh, well, how long were you in the queue for? James oh Christ? yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, so <laughs> I got Bert Irwin's autograph, and then I decided to go into the queue for James Masterson. I'll just let him jump because I distracted. Um, so I got into the queue for James. Wait, I have to pull the jump. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. You see, just clear out a couple of those areas, okay. and then you can hop over. There we go. Ah, perfect. Did it. Okay. So I got in the queue for James um, Masterson then, because uh, Linda. Oh shit! Did you not look at where you were going? Yeah, I wasn't thinking. Um, <laughs> Linda Hampton's queue. You gotta was... stop, look, and listen. Yeah. So Linda Hampton's <laughs> queue was still very, very massive. Actually, dub more than doubled in size. I say. Oh wow! And I was like. Uh, no, and I was like, I'm head. I was looking at James after his queue, and I was like, oh, maybe like 40 minutes. No, because he was actually, I would say, what took it long as well was the fact he was so lovely and he did talk to everyone for a bit that spoke to him for a good few minutes. I that is nice. I have I, a couple of stories myself yeah, once you he, finish up. Just yeah, to... so I queued and so I queued a quarter to 11. So that means within 15 ish minutes, I got Ronica Taylor's autograph and Bert Irwin's in 15 minutes and spoke to them both. Yeah. And Ronica Taylor also hugged me. Aww. She hugged everybody because she's just such a gem. <laughs> um, like, oh, actually, yeah, because this way, my friend last weekend, like I said, I met her again. And she, the first thing she said was, she met her a few years ago too, and she went, Ronica Taylor's so lovely. Like, we always remember how lovely and sweet she was, I think. But I can. So I went into the queue at a quarter to 11 and then at 11 my boyfriend did text me to say hey I'm in and I was like he's like I'm in the trade hall at Sandbox because you know he also knows the lads from Sandbox mm -hmm. and I was like I am currently queuing for Spike's autograph <laughs> <laughs> and he was like okay tell me when you're done and okay so put this way, I knew my boyfriend had to go to the Magic the Gathering tournament that they were doing at 12. I texted him at quarter past 12 to say I was done. So I was in my <laughs> queue for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Wow. I, I spoke to like these two guys in the queue. One was older than me and one was a teenager. The guy, the guy behind me was a teenager. The guy that brought to me was older. And we just spoke to each other for the entire hour and a half nearly. Because what well, else we that's really good. do? I mean, at least you weren't just standing there. Yeah, like... we were having great old chats. Like... Awesome. That's good to hear. And then we never spoke again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it happens, doesn't it? Yeah, we were like, I know I did see the teenager once at the staircase, and we go like, oh, hi, how are ya? But we were kind of with our own friend group at that point, so we kind of just, yeah, I don't think yeah. he was like 15, I'm, I'm 31, I'm not going to be like, hanging out with a teenager at 31. But yeah, we already had a big discussion on all that this. That is freaky as fuck. <laughs> but it was different, like in the queue situation. Yeah, just hanging out, yeah. Especially when you're queuing for the same thing, and mm. the same interest, I think that's more acceptable yeah yeah and yeah. i thought how you meet people because 
I don't know if we've actually shared the story of how we met on this. Uh, uh, I think we met, we met in college. Well, yeah, but did we actually talk about this for like the channel? I don't know. I, maybe? I actually can't remember. I do remember it was, we didn't meet at the Anime Society originally. We met at the, cause I am dyslexic. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone would hear you that there. I don't care if people know. You actually mentioned it before. Uh, oh, did I? I couldn't remember. Yeah, why did you bring up? I mean, it was to do with math, uh, the math and. Oh, maybe the math. Oh, yeah. Um, so I am dyslexic. Um, so even though I'm just barely dyslexic, like a very borderline, um, I still qualify for a lot of the stuff. So I, my boyfriend of the time has Asperger's, as you knew, you knew him. Mm -hmm. And the event was for people who had like Asperger's and everything. Like, are you okay? Yeah. With, do they know you? Yeah, they, yeah. They, oh. but I, I'm very open about it. Oh, okay, yeah. So, and you know, you, oh, you were there too. So I remember, was it the lunch break? It was a lunch break. We were in the cafeteria. So I think it was like a lunch break for the thing. So I remember, what was it, Final Fantasy 13 2 that came out recently? I don't know if it was 13 2. What it was, was I was reading a book and I was sitting there. I was talking about Final Fantasy. No, Final Fantasy 13 came, 2 came out. Oh, no, I was currently still playing it because it came out that year. And like, I was sitting there reading my book and I'm like, I can hear like little oh, conversations. Oh, I was talking about Sarah Farron. You were talking about Sarah, you talk about snow and lightning. And I, I turn around. I how good to go, how good Sarah is for everybody. Yeah, and I turn around and I'm like, are you talking about Final Fantasy 13? And you're like, yeah! <laughs> like, you were very excited about Yeah, because um, besides, at the time, besides two of my good friends, like my boyfriend obviously listened to my boyfriend at the time. It's me talk about Final Fantasy, and he kind of played some because he did play some video games, but he was fix it. He was definitely more into like Assassin's Creed and Red, oh, Dead, yeah. and Red Dead Redemption than Final Fantasies. But he's play, he played thirteen. I do know he played thirteen. Uh, all right, but I think he played thirteen because I played thirteen. Oh yeah, okay. And yeah. um, but uh, so yeah, you then asked her to talk about Final Fantasy, and then we ended up seeing each other. Was it two weeks later? At the anime, uh, well, that about two or three weeks or later. Whatever it was. I think that was either about two or three weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we would have still met each other, but that was a good kind of like. Oh, but we, 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 the handy thing is when we got into the anime society, though, um, since we already met, it was much easier to just go hi again. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and I like I was very happy because like, the thing is, it's at those kind of things, it's always like hard for me to like find people with the same interest and yeah. so hearing you talk about Final Fantasy 13 and, and it surprised a lot of people now because I'm so talkative but um I was still slightly shyer when I got into college the first time more open than I was when I was a teenager and a child but still slightly shyer and nervous like I remember I was really nervous uh putting my hand up to be um PR Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you know the reason I put my hand up for PR for anime society was because no one would put their hand up and I wanted the conversation to end. Yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't mention the conversation to end part. You mentioned wanted, before that I wanted it to no one speak. else had like... Yeah, no put their hand up and I just wanted it to be over. But best decision ever because I do think being in society really opened me up more. Oh, yeah, as, in, as in being on the committees. Yeah. Definitely opened me up more as a person. Awesome. Um, so just to share my story of cons and meeting people, um, oh yeah, so so look, so what you're aiming here now is... Actually, go, I, I meant I have to jump kind of down and then do a double jump at the end, kind of? Yeah, so just hop off, jump, and then... Oh, fuck. Okay, I don't know why There you, we go. Why you did it like that, but that's fine. It's fine. Um, hop onto the one on the left. Oh. Very nice if we had a, um... Oh, oh fuck. Just oh, grip onto yeah, the... Yeah, sorry. I, I was pressing the wrong buttons. It's okay. There we go. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry, now I'm starting to... Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll share my stories now. I'll talk a bit while yeah, you Yeah, sorry, because I take too long when I'm trying to focus and tell stories. You know, it's, well, actually, oddly enough, sometimes you do better when you're talking. I know, it's so weird, because I think my brain's turned off and I'm just doing something. Um, like, I think that in Chantley's there was a good few times where that happened. But anyway, so basically, in like I've met a good few people at cons and had gotten their autographs and stuff, but obviously the ones I remember the most are the ones I actually had conversations with. I think I've always had conversations with all of them. Some of them, like, I, I like what you said, which is that sometimes they're so busy that you don't really have a conversation with them. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, one of my favorite memories is actually meeting Matthew Wood. Now, do you know who Matthew Wood is, Caitlin? The name is familiar, but I can't remember what he does. So... He does a couple of things. So for those of you guys who are into Star Wars, um, 
so I guess I'll start with his acting, um, because that's probably going to be the easiest for some people to remember. So, um, in the prequels, he voices the battle droids, and he also voices General Grievous. Do you remember General um, Grievous, Caitlin? I'd never... What was Star... Not Star Wars. Star Wars, was it? Yeah. No, I don't remember General Grievous then. You watched it with me, remember? I do, but I don't remember who it is. Okay, okay. He's just like this big cyborg guy uh, with four arms, and he scuttles around everywhere. Cool dude. Excuse me. Um, and also... But he, he doesn't just do that. He's also like a... Some kind of sound technician behind the scenes as well. Like, if you look at the credits, he's also involved in, like, the actual, like, sound editing and stuff of the movie or something like that. I, it's to do with sound. I know that. So, I'll say it. cool dude. Um, I went to the... There was a con, like a Star Wars con in Cork. And I head there, and his queue... We, I was most excited to meet him. His queue was the shortest. Um, and so, there was, like... Now, after a while, like people started going there, but um, yeah, people were probably doing what I was what I was saying. They go to they kind of go to some people go to the bigger queues first, and then go to smaller queues. Yeah. So, but what it did give us was I actually spoke to him for twenty minutes, which his queue was so small. Yeah. Which yeah. twenty minutes? That's actually a ridiculously long time to talk. I think to like someone who's getting an like who's given an autograph and stuff I, I do you know what camera it was she was the voice actor of Edna in um Jote, uh, uh, oh Dysteria Dysteria yeah and god she, I looked her up recently yeah she was at Comic Con a couple of years ago oh because she was in River City Girls which I played recently yeah and she, and she also voiced Yumi in English dub of Love Live and you know how much I love Love Live he really loved and, Love Live and um her cue there was like nobody uh, she was just chatting to people. Wow. Yeah. How, how long did you... Uh... Uh, I chatted for a good few minutes. I, I I think someone else was waiting then when I was nearly done, so I didn't want to take up oh, yeah, too course. much time. Yeah. But I think the person before me was talking to her for ages. By the way, can I say, that energy crystal there is teasing us. Like, wouldn't it be nice to be able to go there, get the energy back, and do a checkpoint up here? <laughs> I know. Um, so... So like I, I that was like a wonderful experience oh, being sorry. able to talk to Matthew Wood. Oh, oh, sorry. It's okay. Just like recenter yourself. Um, you, you keep. Um, yeah. Sorry. For some reason I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you can just hop there, there if you want. Um, so that was like a fantastic experience. And then another favorite experience uh, that I have is when I met Jason Momoa. Oh yeah, you were saying that. Yeah, so I mean, I'm gonna assume that most people would know Jason Momoa now, but I'm also just gonna specify just because I'm so used to people not knowing who he is. So, um, he back in the day, <gasps> back in the day, he, um, like obviously, like I'd say a lot of people back in the day knew him for Cal Drogo from Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, Game of Thrones. Um, I actually knew him uh, from Stargate Atlantis though. He, I know his, I think his, his character's name I think was Ronan Dex. Um, but um, cool guy. Obviously everyone I guess now knows him for Aquaman. Yes, uh, he's also a very, very attractive actor. Uh, he is. Uh, and, but... One thing is, I went to, like, I was explaining this to you the other day, I think, Caitlin, mm -hmm. which was, um, he, basically his assistant, the one who was there, basically we would have to write our names down and hand them up so that when we got there, he could just kind of... Oh, yeah, that's very common. Yeah. Um, so I wrote down my name, and for those who, like, are hearing Owen written out, you might be thinking to yourself that it's spelled like O-W-E-N or something. Oh, no, it's like... It's the Irish Owen. Oh, Irish yeah. people, we love spelling our names weird. Well, it's because of Ireland, uh, Irish. So my name is spelled E O G H A N. And uh, I remember when we got up there and she handed Jason Momoa like the, the paper to have my name written down on it. He looked at it and he kind of did this thing of like, like, you know, just a, you know, like his head goes back and like he kind of, he's like, uh, he was like, uh, you know, what is this? And my father explained to him, because he was with me, he was like, uh, that's the Irish spelling for Owen. And then Jason Momoa delivered, like, one of probably my favorite, like, <laughs> lines, like, that he's ever, like, anyone has ever said to me. Which was, he was just, he was like, Owen. 
And then just to clarify for this quotation here, I don't swear, so I'm going to censor his one, but obviously he, he said the whole thing. He was like, that's effing rad. <laughs> No. Like, oh, so I think a lot of the time, I, ha- I know people have met mean people at cons. I personally haven't, though. Oh, I'm going to. Mean isn't quite the right word for it. Dismissive. But dismissive is what my experience was. So I mentioned your man, uh, Jason Momoa, because of Game of Thrones. Um, I, there was a few Game of Thrones people there, and one of them was uh, Ian Glenn, who I don't know if you even know Ian Glenn, Caitlin. No, um, I don't think so. But um, he plays like a wonderful character in in Game of Thrones. Uh, um, yes, yeah, I never got into Game of Thrones. Sorry for people who nah, are going to murder me online. For no, that. no. That, well, people kind of turned against Game of Thrones for the last season. Yeah, but I didn't but, even get into it after watching like one episode. I just, yeah. Um, well, actually, you saw two episodes and you freaked out when uh, yeah, the ending I, of the last episode. Yeah, I don't like unnecessary animal killing. Uh, no, that was a couple of years ago. I've kind of... Toughened up, toughened up to it because I get it. It's film now and the genres. Um, I don't like it in horror movies still, but I get it for time pieces now. Kind of like that would have been. Yeah, been and also in the case of Game of Thrones, they didn't actually hurt that animal. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If I wouldn't watch anything that actually hurt the animals in real life for the film, that's disgusting. And I don't think it's illegal. It's illegal though. Uh, it might be, but I mean, there's a few movies that I, I have. Old that... movies, but I don't. It's not legal anymore. Maybe I can't. I, I have. I'm not a, a lawyer, so no, I wouldn't it's be specific. Definitely no longer legal to do that. Um, but with regards to Ian Glenn, so he, it wasn't that he was mean at all. As you said, it was more a case of being dismissive. He was very much like, get this done. Like he wasn't really talking to people. He wasn't really like. You know, being communicative, it was like, gotta just sign everything. And even though I think I wrote out my name for him, he just couldn't spell it right. And he went through, like, I don't know, maybe three or four, like, versions of it. One of them. And, and, like, in the end, we just accepted one that has a misspelling. So my my, um, my autograph of his... Um, is spelt so just to spell again for you folks my the correct spelling of my name is e o g h a n um hop in okay i would have hopped in that left one because that might lead to the energy crystal which means you might be able to say maybe okay i can't remember which one leads the energy crystal you see but i'd be inclined to think that is the one that's right beside you okay Uh, when i get up there we can discuss it yeah um so the what he wrote was E W G H A N, which I just went with it in the end. But I, I admit that wasn't like of all the people I've met, that was probably the one of the it's more annoying, yeah, unpleasant experiences. Just because he it, he clearly wasn't into it per se. Like actually, the thing is, the other conversation we had before about this was. How soon, how long into the day was it when you got your autograph? Was it like one of the first autographs you did of the day or was it like one of the last? Um, I get where you're going with it, but I'll respond. I I thought it was like maybe middle or something. I can't remember exactly. I know I like getting my autographs early because they are way more excited to meet people. I can imagine. But the the other thing is, (laughs) there's a couple of things about this. So one... Like, it's still a public presence thing. So, like, I think even if you're tired, you still need to be, like, nice and stuff. And secondly, they're actors. They can act, like, enthusiastic at least, you know? They don't have to really be enthusiastic. They just... So where do I jump for yourself? Okay, so go up first. And instead of heading towards the spider, try going to the one, um... Like, to the left here. Oh. Well, there's life here, but that isn't quite... Okay, so I guess the other way is the energy crystal, so go back out. Okay, um, how are we going to do this now? Yeah, there is an energy crystal. There's another portal there, yeah. Uh, so... I have... Pre- uh, I could just skip it. Do I need the energy crystal? If you want to do a checkpoint. True, but how long till another energy crystal? I, I don't know. I honestly can't remember. Um, like, just avoid the attacks. Um, and... <laughs> this is how you're gonna do it? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's almost dead. Oh, okay. Oh, no! That tactic was working though. 
If I didn't fall off the cliff, that it, tactic worked. It was a bit messy, though. It oh. was working. Okay, I'll, I'll let you do it, handle it your own way. Um, um, but yeah, so but middle, I would say, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's just sometimes, like, because um, I do know when I saw Veronica Taylor years ago, she did get sad if people bought up Pokemon and her no longer voicing Ash a few years ago because it did make her sad. Aww. But I don't know if she was, I loved her as a new voice of Pluto. She is the new voice of Sailor Pluto. And she was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to know, did she have any reaction to the fact that she was getting a Slayers thing to sign? I don't think so. I think she was like, oh, Slayers. I think that's kind of it. I just think, I think she does get a lot of Pokemon and a lot of Pluto now because okay. she is the new voice of Pluto because she had, I got a picture with her face and a load of all of her characters she's voiced on it because mm. I love those because that's to me just really nice because I don't like just the character I because I, like I said, I frame them now that I do like having it, but then I also like their characters around them because then it's like, this is what they do. Um, and actually that Bert Irwin had him in a picture of Mickey Mouse, which was so cute. Like he was sitting in a chair and Mickey Mouse was like standing next to him and it was like really <laughs> cute. Um, but, uh, and actually um, Tara Strong had something similar as well a couple of years is ago. Is she the one that you absolutely adore? Yeah. Her, yeah. Um, and she's also lovely. She's like the voice of Riku from Final Fantasy X, Ted 2. Oh yeah, your favorite Final Fantasy character. And Raven in Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. Which is... Isn't she? Wasn't she in Powerpuff Girls? She is Bubbles. The original Bubbles. Yep. Not the new Bubbles. The original. And that's why I said she was because I think I remember you mentioning that they yeah. got recast or something. They got recast. Uh, and she was also Juliet in like one of my favorite funny games ever, Lollipop Chainsaw. Oh yeah, you love Lollipop Chainsaw. Oh for fuck's sake, I got stuck in the corner. Um, but like, um, they're remaking that, but there's, I don't know if she, it's barely, they were saying it's supposed to be coming out this year, the remake. I think I heard that it got delayed. Yeah, I was thinking that, because I was like, there's no news. Yeah, that's what, I, I read an article recently where it was like. I only looked it up two weeks ago, because I was like, is there any news on this? And it was still saying, um. Maybe it was more recent than that then, but I definitely saw an article saying it's getting delayed. And someone was saying, I expected this because all we've gotten so far is basically just the announcement. Yeah. And no I trailers. think maybe the, maybe the there's, new there's no, title There's well. also no voice cast. Yeah, so there's like a bit of mystery all about people it. People are wondering, is uh, is she voicing um, Juliet again? Like, so, I would love it if she voiced Juliet again. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, so... Oh, fuck then. Oh, now you're completely out of energy. Yeah, that was my fault. I, 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 I could just die, I guess, and go back. I... Mm. I died anyway. Oh, that hit takes two life. It does, yes. You see, it's it's quick, but it's not that quick. It's easy enough to jump over. You see? This is how I would do it. I... Oh, you skip the spider and just jump? No, no, no. What it is, is I stand there, and when the attack's coming at me, I just jump over it, and I keep, like, attacking the spider. Oh, okay. I mean, if you want, I can give you an example, maybe, of that well, when can, you get there. Because, I can do it. Because last time I did a couple of examples with regards to platforming, but maybe not so much with regards to combat. Maybe. So if you want to see me, like, I, I'm willing to to do that bit for you, like, just killing that spider. That and you can see how I do it. I do know you were saying about the magic tournament er earlier. So basically, my boyfriend went to the magic tournament at 12. Because uh, obviously when I text him at quarter past 12 saying, I'm done, and he texts me literally like, I'm at the magic tournament. And I was like, yeah, I guess, see you when you're done. Like I assumed, so I knew there was like an tournament at 12, and there was like another thing when that at two or something, or three, and there was gonna be another thing at five. Mm. Uh, so I kind of thought I'd be seeing him, like put this way, we went, we went up on Friday night, the like almost on Saturday, we met at the train station, I had my little rucksack, and he had this small rucksack, this massive rucksack that's back. The massive rucksack back with all his Magic the Gathering cards. What? Yeah, he bought so many Magic the Gathering cards to stuff them with him. Yeah, he has, oh, his room is full of them. They're all over his floor, they're all over his desk, they're everywhere. My god. Like, yeah, um, yeah. I thought he'd just have, like, a couple of decks. No! <laughs> no! God, no. Um, um, when you date someone who really plays Magic, they really play Magic. It's, like insane because my friend who's i'm going to a birthday tonight for one of my best friend's boyfriends they've been together like god 10 years he they play magic together and he's the same wow and he would have like decks everywhere like he won't even tell her how much he spends a month of magic the gathering cards when she asks <laughs> that is ooh, interesting um i mean i know magic gathering oh is... it's an ex 
expensive hobby. That's one of the reasons why I haven't gotten into it. Like, but I picked up in a cosplay like, because you know I only had a starter deck that I wasn't like all that into it. Ah, fuck. You can still get up there. Yeah, if you want. I'm gonna. You see, the pro I think okay. I think I see some of what the problem here is. When you're not in the middle, like when you're t far too f to the far right, you're gripping onto the wall yeah, as you hop I up. Think, I think that was the problem. Yeah. Um. Oh. Nice. Oh, that was great. Okay. Are you sure you don't want me to try doing this? Okay, spider? you can try. It. Okay. You okay. Can try it. I'm yeah. just gonna give it a quick go, folks, and see. Well, yeah. do know Keep in mind, it's been a while. You need content as well. Kind of like that. Okay. Tell you what, let me just... Uh, Get over there just in case. Please let this be the MG. It is! And we have plenty of health, so what I'll do for you, and then... Uh, You're gonna run back. We'll save past the portal, I'm guessing? Oh, shoot! <sighs> it's okay. You want me to save after this next portal? I say so. What do you think? Uh, oh, actually, yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. 